Welcome to European Parliamentary Research Service podcast on new plant breeding techniques and the applicability of EU GMO rules. New plant breeding and genetic modification techniques have evolved rapidly in recent years, offering promising solutions to pressing challenges such as feeding the growing world population, adapting to climate change and protecting our natural resources. But how should the new techniques be regulated? Should they fall under current EU GMO rules or not? Stay with us and plunge into the debate. Plant breeding is a very old and common practice. Actually, many varieties of plants cultivated today, including barley, wheat and grapefruit, have been modified with traditional plant breeding techniques. So what's the fuss about? Well, there's a fundamental difference between so-called traditional and new plant breeding techniques. In the first case, the plant's genetic material is modified through the use of radiation or chemicals. This way of modifying genetic material, called mutagenesis, is exempt from the scope of EU GMO rules because mutations are artificially induced without insertion of foreign DNA and has a long history of safe use. In the modern approach, biotechnology is applied in plant breeding to introduce new traits in a plant's DNA, for instance, to make it more tolerant to herbicides, more resistant to droughts, or even more nutritious. And the first new plant varieties developed with such new technologies have already hit the markets. In the US, for instance, it's already possible to buy herbicide-tolerant oilseed rape, non-browning apples and soybean oil made to be healthier. In the US and Canada too, the first genetically modified animal, Atlantic salmon, modified to grow faster, has now been approved for human consumption. But in Europe, things are not moving as fast. No, they aren't. And that's because there is a strong debate on how these new techniques should be regulated and whether some or all of them should fall within the scope of current EU GMO rules. Now, what are the main positions in this debate? Stay with us. Well, there are basically two sides to the debate. Those who believe the new techniques should be exempt from GMO legislation argue that the end product is very similar to products generated using traditional breeding techniques or that similar changes could also occur naturally. Those who take the opposing view contend that the processes used are similar to those used to generate GMOs and that, despite the claimed precision, unintended effects are still possible. Now, who's right? Well, precisely because it is not clear, member states asked the Commission to provide some guidance, but the Commission turned to the European Court of Justice for a final verdict. This came in July 2018 when the court ruled that organisms obtained by the new techniques are GMOs and thus fall under the scope of EU GMO legislation. While welcomed by environmentalists, the judgment also sparked criticism and calls for the new commission to change the current EU GMO rules on the basis that they are no longer fit for purpose. Actually, the current EU GMO rules date back to the 1990s and were designed to strictly regulate genetically modified animals and plants into which DNA from other species had been inserted. But in recent years, new gene editing techniques such as CRISPR-Cas9 have become available, triggering strong debate about whether gene editing should count as genetic modification or simply another version of mutagenesis. Under EU law, the definition of a GMO refers both to the characteristics of the organism obtained and to the techniques used to achieve that. Moreover, the rules require that GMOs be identifiable using detection methods. But the truth is that with modern techniques, it is often impossible to tell whether the modification was natural or triggered by a new breeding technique. So scientists in labs across Europe struggle to know how to detect unauthorised gene-edited crops whose altered DNA can mimic natural mutations. Now what is the European Parliament's take on this debate? Stay with us. Well, the Parliament supports the development and use of new plant breeding techniques which respond to societal and agricultural demands and has urged the Commission to clarify their legal status. It also believes that in order to respond to challenges such as future food supply needs and climate change, it's important to have an effective and competitive plant breeding sector in Europe. So more funds are needed to support research in this field. On the other hand, over the past five years, the Parliament has systematically objected to every authorisation of traditional genetically modified food and feed, which has demanded the suspension of all GMO approvals until their authorisation process has been revised. So stay tuned, the debate is not over yet. You're listening to the European Parliamentary Research Service Podcasts.